behaving a little better. everyone, welcome back to another one of my videos. In today's little episode we've got a beautiful little blue, baby blue, uh, LI150 Special to play with. Uh, and it's still on points and condenser. <laughs> so it's never had its timing checked. Uh, we're going to be playing around with the ignition timing and a little bit of work on the carburetor to try and get this to run a little bit sweeter. So let's go and have ourselves a bit of fun. Right, here we go then. Grab yourself a pint of lager and have a bit of fun. Sit down and relax. my favourite cider. Okay what we've got ourselves here is a nice little 22mm Jetex. He's running a 175 Alley barrel, I think he got it from AF Race Speed, uh, that apparently has had its tolerances checked, it obviously got clearance right and all that so it is actually seems to be okay. Um, ignition timings possibly out I would say possibly most definitely carburation it the float leaks so it's over fueling and flooding uh, and I believe the main jet is way way too big because it's just drowning when you try to ride it so we're gonna take the carb off clean the seating and um, change the main jet We'll have a look what jets are in it when we get it off. So we're just going to whip it apart now. First thing we're going to do is we'll just drain the carb off. Okay, it's more or less off. Right, we'll just put something to protect the faces a little bit and we'll just clamp it gently in the vise like this. Okay. Screwdriver. Okay, let's have a look what jets we've got. So at the moment he's running a fifty choke jet, a one thirty main jet, and hold jet. I think I'm gonna to have to take it out to see. From when you get a little bit older, I used to be able to see anything before. And that is a 40, 
five pilot jet. So, 130 main jet, 45 pilot jet, and a 50. So, we're going to get rid of that 130 main jet straight away. That's going to be changed for a better 115, I think, I reckon. Uh, we'll have a look at the atomizer, see what he's got in there. Absolutely no markings on the atomizer. All we've got is Jetix. Thank you. Fabulous. So, atomizer, a bit unknown. Pilot jet we're going to leave alone with the 45, that's okay. Uh, main jet we're changing now for a 115. Right, we're going to get this float bowl out. They are a bit awkward to get out. Just get a screwdriver in the back just to get it moving. And then hopefully we can pull it out with the pliers. Easier said than done. There we go. And we'll check our float needle, which is still in very good condition, and it is red, so that's okay. And now we're going to f clean up the uh, the needle valve seating. So what we're going to use is this is from my local Chinese restaurant. Beautiful piece of bamboo. And it's excellent for cleaning up things like this because it's not going to scratch It's simply going to polish the seating and clean out any uh, residue or deposits So I have actually made it to fit It's actually one end Does me del autos this other end is shaped more for big McCunies Del auto that end big McCunies that end stick it in and literally spin it round like a caveman starting a fire. So we just spin it in there. It cleans the side walls as well because it's a nice fit in there. So any side walls on the any residue on the side walls or at the bottom of the seating all gets cleaned and polished off. So that is how we clean the seating and it is now nice and clean and shiny inside. How's that? So this can now go back together, needle on, always check the side faces of the needle for wear. If you see wear on the side faces of the needle you normally get a notch and that creates a problem. When it's worn down so far, they get a little notch in there. So keep an eye out for that. Is that the right way around? Yeah. So wear on the sides of the needle. And the tip has to be still the correct shape and not with a big indentation around it. If it started to get a big indentation on there, it's time to get it changed and put a new one in. Luckily this carb is pretty well new, so not a problem. we we'll just find a little tool to tap that in with. Okay, in it is. So now that's all done. Unfortunately we can't change the float height on these Del Autos. They're a fixed float height, you can't play with that. So that's simply left alone. 
check your float. Normally what I do with floats is uh, put them on a set of scales and weigh them. But this one's transparent so you can see through it. So if, what I do, the reason I weigh the, the floats is if there's any fuel inside or it's accumulated fuel inside the float, you can see the difference in the weight. But this one's completely transparent. I see straight through it so I know there's no fuel inside and it's in good condition. So we'll now, we don't need to clean anything, it's all spotless. Spotlessly clean. I think it's just been standing a while and the seating's got a little bit furred up. And that's created a problem there. Where are we? So we're now on a smaller main jet, 115. That might have to be changed again when we go out for a bit of a jet test. Okay, we'll quickly take off the, the banjo here and check inside for cleanliness. It's all beautifully clean. Nothing to do there. It's my lucky day. Okay. We'll, uh, we'll proceed to putting this back together now. Retighten. Put our fuel line back on and hopefully it's going to be behaving a little better. Come on baby, get on there. Jobs are good in. Okay, we've uh, got the flower cover off, dust cover off. Uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to clean up here with a wire brush so we can actually see something. There's our arrow. Right, it's never been timed because it's only got the original timing marks. So nobody's ever been here. Uh, Quick check at the flywheel. Yeah, it's got a little bit of play in the flywheel bearing. Not too work bad. Main bearing is good. Right, I'll just get it on some compression. Check the big end. I don't feel any play. So the big end feels quite nice. It's not the perfect way of doing it but it gives us an idea of the condition of this engine. By just putting it on compression and just rocking slightly to see if there's any click clack sound, it's perfect. That means there's no piston slap, there's no little end bearing movement, there's no big end play. The only play we've found is a little bit in the up and down on the flywheel bearing. So it's got a bit of flywheel bearing play there, but um, that'll live until he finally does a proper engine rebuild. Uh, but you never know, it could last another 30 years. <laughs> it's anybody's guess. Okay, that's the top, that's our arrow on the flywheel. Now we're just going to take a couple of little marks here. That one, then all the way back, we've got our piston stopping. This is just to determine our top dead centre mark. Okay. And that one. So we can see already that their top dead centre mark is out. Right. 
and they will measure, take some measurements and mark up our new top dead centre. Okay, there's our new top dead centre mark. That's the old one, slightly out. That is now the corrected one and we'll uh, put a little pinch, punch mark in there to make it permanent. Right, that's our buzz wangle on and zeroed. Let's get the light back on. And I'm going to have to zero again. Right, so we're going to put this one, uh, we're going to put him on 18 degrees. I normally go for 17 for most engines, but this one's pretty well running standard. We're just going to do, we're going to do 18 degrees. It'll be fine. So 18, which is there. Come on, baby. So we'll just mark that up. And we'll uh, put a little punch mark in and make that permanent as well. Job done. So, just a matter of putting a strobe on it and running it now. running exactly on the original timing mark of 21 degrees but according to my uh, buzz wangle and my piston stop the timing marks are out so it's more like about 24 degrees so it's running uh, a little bit advanced so we're going to retard it some to our 19 degree mark which we've established and uh, restart it up Okay, uh, well this bike's an I-bar, so it's an early one, so it hasn't got the motor plat, so it's an early Spanish ignition on here. Anyway, the pad here, this pad here, lubricates the cam that's on the inside of the flywheel that operates your points. So if this pad is dry, then there's no lubrication on the cam, your points will wear down, the back of the points will wear down quite quickly and the gap will close. So we're going to put some lubrication here. Points to sit don't seem to be in too bad a condition. Everything seems to be working. I'm not going to replace anything just for the sake of it. Because um, I'd much prefer this to be changed to electronic ignition and have some nice 12 volt lighting. Uh, which is a big advantage so all we're going to do is oil up the little pad and uh, change the ignition timing because everything's working okay guys I have put a link below there is a link below and it's called buy me a dyno and that is for you boys to try and support me I don't care what you send one pound will be fine towards buying me a dyno so I can do lots of nice experiments for you. I promise I will not spend it on beer. So we're just slacking these off. And retard slightly. Let's not move for a long time. It needs a little persuasion. Oh, 
Okay. Let me back up. The plate up in place. Add a little bit of lube on this. That'll soak in the pad. And there we got some lubrication on it. Right, back together. And let's uh, fire it up and have a look how close my timing is now to where I want it to be. Okay. It's now running on 18 degrees and we're, we've set the points as well, reset the points, check the gap and we're running on 16 there which is 0.416 of a millimetre which is well within tolerance. You want to be between point, uh, 0.35, 0.35 of a mil to 0.4 of a millimetre, 0.45 something like that. So 0.4 is fine. I've got this running really sweet now on um, 16 thousandths of an inch and that's where it's going to stay because it's really happy. So all you do spin it round to top dead center on your top dead center mark which means your points should now be pretty well fully open Make sure they're fully open, slide your feeler gauge just in between and should just get a nice drag feel between the points. And that's it. And that's on 0.4 of a mil. She's running lovely, sir. Okay, so that's all good to go now. We can put everything back together. We're now running at a decent ignition timing and the engine is picking up like completely different. It's running much better now. Ah, just to add to this, if you don't want to buy me a dyno, go ahead and buy Sticky's book of kits. Find the link down below. You know it makes sense. Well it's been a really hot day today and I'm absolutely whacked so I'm going to finish up this video now and go and drink a beer. A beer? A beer? A beer? A what? A beer by my pool. See ya. Bye. Oh, don't forget to subscribe. See you later. Bye.